there, Jared Martin from Investors Edge Real Estate. Thanks for joining me for my first Perth property market update of 2015. I'm going to take you through the sale market, the rental market and things to consider on the investment side. So I've titled this one Business as Usual. That's because we've had our holiday period and uh, all signs are that we're back on par with where we were in um, December. A very neutral market and I'm going to take you through exactly what that looks like at the moment with our number of properties for sale. Um, in January, we had, uh, you know, the market took a dip and tightened up. And that's because a lot of people are on holidays, uh, you know, just waiting to put their properties on if they were going to. And uh, now we're back in line with where we were in December. So we've got just o um, over 13,000 properties for sale. And um, that is the, our peak of number for sale that we've had in the last two years. So we're in a very definite neutral market now. Some areas are performing better than others um, and uh, properties are generally selling in four to six weeks. The higher price points are taking longer and the lower price points are generally moving a bit faster. Number of properties sold, you can see that in January things were a bit quieter. We dropped down to uh, 650 odd um, sales per week and now we're back in line with where we were trending for the four to five months of the last year. So around 800 sales per week. And you can see way back um, in uh, last year, how we compared, we were actually getting around a thousand sales per week, which um, was right up there with our peak. So we've come a, a long way uh, down in the activity since then. Market certainly cooled and we've seen the effects of the slowing mining sector. I wanted to take you through um, what I see happening uh, with the interest rates and its effect on the market. You can see here, this is a long-term graph showing um, our interest rate levels, and uh, we're a bit lower than where the graph shows. This is to uh, 2011, but our um, very standard variable rates are around 4.5%. And that puts us in line with where they were at their lowest in 1959. <laughs> So we really do have a gift at the moment in terms of uh, our repayment levels and don't expect that to continue. You can see that over time the interest rates have moved through cycles as our economy has and you can see way back um, in 1989-1990 we were at uh, six, 17 odd percent. So we've come a long way since then. We've generally been trending down with um, minor upward trends in between and um, all I'm saying on the interest rate side is that it's such a great market for owning uh, property and um, both investment and your home, but don't count on um, these rates forever. Look forward and future-proof yourself. Um, make sure that you can afford your house and your investment property if rates do go back up another one, two, three percent. But over the coming uh, months, I'm expecting um, at least one more interest rate drop over the next six months. Um, it's the RBA's blunt tool for trying to stimulate the housing market and we need the housing market to keep going to offset the slowing mining sector. However, my personal view is that the drops in interest rates are starting to have lesser and lesser impact on our market. Our market is being saturated and, and um, the real problem with affordability is not um, affording to keep a house the problem is affording to buy it in the first place. So I think our government needs to more look at stamp duty rates. I mean, we've just chopped the rate for first home buyers um, and that's counter to uh, stimulating. So I think we would have had a, a much bigger impact on the market if we'd changed uh, transfer duty rates or changed other incentives to make the barrier of entry um, lower. So. We still have to save a, a big deposit for most people. It takes a long time to get your 20% if you want to avoid lender's mortgage insurance. Um, and, uh, you know, especially when we're making it tougher for first home buyers, you know, those are the areas we should be looking at. Uh, interest rates in themselves is not getting, you know, many more buyers into the market. So going into the Perth rental market, where we're now at is 6,250 odd properties on the market for rent, and that's the most we've had in the two years that I've been keeping this graph. So it has started to plateau off in the last four to five months and stabilize, but in, um, in January, 
we uh, actually had uh, slightly more than we do now. So it's starting to trend back down, but January was our peak of supply with 16,313. And uh, the reason for that is that uh, we try to write a lot of our leases not to expire in December and January, uh, try to keep them expiring in the other parts of the year. But, um, and, and the reason for that is there's not as many tenants um, looking to change over in that period. A lot of people are on holidays, a lot of people are distracted. So now we're back in the market and it is business as usual on the rental side. And I'm going to be watching um, things very closely over the coming months just to see if that um, does continue to stabilise because in um, we've now had our median rent drop by a further $10 per week and it had been sitting on four fifty per week for four to five months and now as a result of that extra supply on in January the stats have um, certainly shown that drop um, a little bit more in the, in the rent. So um, I hopefully will see that bounce back up again in the coming month and it might just be a bit of a statistical anomaly with the, um, with the over uh, extra oversupply of rentals in January. Um, so nothing too much to worry about yet but have noticed it. And the rental vacancy rate, you can see that it peaked up in um, January as well at 4.2%, the highest percentage that we've recorded in the two years. And um, now it's pulled back by 0.1% uh, to 4.1% in February. So I'll keep an eye on it and keep you updated in the coming months. But certainly um, from all reports from my leasing managers, there's a lot more activity now. Things seem to be stabilising and we've generally pulled back 10% on where we were. So, investing. I wanted to take you through a really great graph that I like. The market um, moves with emotions and everyone in the market um, you know, goes through these emotions. And I love to look at this graph because the easiest time for us to get in is when the market's starting to move up and everyone's experiencing enthusiasm, exhilaration, euphoria, and that's when we reach at the peak of our market. These are the times when we shouldn't be getting in necessarily. Um, then on the other side, we start going through the other range of negative emotions of unease and denial, you know, not even accepting that things are coming back, pessimism and uh, panic, capitulation, despair, and then we move back around again you start getting hope and it builds back up so the hardest thing as an investor is actually acting counter to the market but that's when we need to act that's when it's going to be easier when there's not as much competition when we're not overpaying for properties and we're starting to get conditions uh, more like that now um, I'd suggest that we're a bit in the pessimism phase we're kind of switching between um, the two and uh, that would correspond with our neutral market where we're not up and we're not down, but we've, there's a general sort of pessimism when you speak to um, you know, people about town. So uh, you know, opportunities will start uh, becoming more ripe and uh, you've got to be selective in this market. You know, some people have still got their properties priced uh, too high up here, but then there are those that are realistic meeting the market and getting sold and, and the numbers and overall returns are starting to stack up more and more. So be selective and in any market, um, I've just been talking averages. So in any market there'll be suburbs that are performing and there'll be suburbs that are going backward. We can help you choose the ones that are set to perform and they're going to have the infrastructure, the transition, um, you know, the major uh, buzz and demand that'll keep prices going up even in uh, when others are going back the other way. So there is always counter um, you know, counter forces going on in the market. Just wanted to take you through that and think about your emotions when you're at. Um, more focus on uh, buying property when you can act and investing for the long term, not uh, buying when it's uh, the popular chat discussion at your barbecue. Then you're probably too late and shouldn't be. And I also wanted to take you through this uh, long term annual growth rates because I often myself find myself getting stuck in short term thinking and trying to time the market perfectly but if I'd only just hang, hung on to that property or two that uh, you know I was driving past one the other day and it's gone up 
you know, by a further 10, um, 15 percent, and I've sold it. So it's, um, you know, I don't time the market perfectly every time either. I'm learning, um, and uh, you know, my only regrets have come from uh, selling properties when I could have held them and experience more of these longer term rates. So you can see that over 50 years, the Perth market's averaged 8.6%. And that's very similar to the last 10 year average. And we've pretty much averaged this um, eight, high 8% eight um, over the course of the last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. So um, with population uh, growth continuing, um, I can't see this changing but the market will continue to move through cycles. So if you're investing for the long term, um, you know, you don't have to time the market perfectly and you can experience these kind of rates hopefully moving forward. I just wanted to also touch on dual income property because we've had a, um, it's been really well received by our clients. I love it personally myself. I wanted to take you through an example. So. Um, here on the screen you can see that under the one roof we've got two rentable spaces and in this example we've got two two by ones so you can see bedroom one, bedroom two, living area at the back. They have a common um, entry. We have a double garage that we can either uh, um, divide in half uh, to keep it a bit more private or just keep it as a common garage. Um, and then we've got our second uh, uh, independent space under the main roof here with its similar one and two bedrooms, uh, back living area, and they've got their own alfrescos. So um, each uh, person can come and go, have their own independent space. We separately power meter the, um, each of them so we know how much power they use. This one's an example for Cavisham. Um, so purchase price for this one would be 595, and that's a real quality build that is full turnkey. So the last thing you want to do is be getting along and finding that the paving's not done, your landscaping's not done, and you have to spend um, a whole bunch of money um, after you've built. Um, and it's a big hassle to organise those things too. So purchase price 595, full turnkey, and each two by one would likely rent for 360 per week. So that'll give us a total of 720 per week, which is a, a very healthy 6.3%. Rental yields have now more dropped to around 4.5% um, for, for similar 3x2 and 4x2s in, in, say, this suburb. Um, that gives us a total annual rent of 36,000. Um, and I, I allowed for two weeks vacancy in that. And then if we calculate our annual interest repayments based on 4.5%, we'd be at 26,755. And yes, that can change over time, but the point is that this kind of property will insulate you against changes. And you can see that before tax, um, and uh, we haven't included rates or property management, but just to give you an example, before tax, that's $9,248 in your pocket. And I'd rather have four or five of them um, which will add to your income, increase your borrowing power, enable you to go about replacing your income much sooner and um, it's far better to have money in your pocket along the way than for it to be coming out. Then you, you don't have to sell if the market um, it takes a downturn. You don't have to time the market perfectly. You can hold it for the long run and experience that capital growth. So this doesn't include uh, depreciation. That'll probably put another 200 bucks uh, per week or another 10 grand in your pocket after tax um, because this brand new property and we're not going to have trouble attracting tenants because when you look in um, an area like Cavisham, what have tenants got to rent? They've got a four by two, which is a big family home. They've got a three by two cottage block, which is still, you know, uh, higher price than, not ev than everyone can afford. And then uh, this fits in nicely at 360 odd per week when they'd be having to pay 420, 430, um, for a three by two. So there's nothing else for them to rent at this price, so we have no problems filling it quickly. Finally, just wanted to give you a heads up on some upcoming events. I'll be emailing you out uh, separately over the coming month. Uh, we've got a Brisbane property uh, seminar that we're running, which will take us through exactly what's happening in the market there, show you some uh, property examples, and we've searched long and hard to find property that stacks up over there. I'm not suggesting that um, you know you buy there over Perth, but if you are going to invest into state, Brisbane is certainly uh, going to be the market of choice for this year. And uh, 
Then I'm running a seminar on building your portfolio. I'm gonna go through all the ins and outs and house and land and building and also the dual income stuff. So look out for that invite as well. Hope to see you at a seminar coming up and I hope you've really enjoyed this update. Do leave your comments below. I love to uh, get your feedback and I'll happy to answer any questions. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.